This video is brought to you by Lou Merritt, a better way to do college. Find out more at lumerit.com forward slash brain food or follow the link in the description below. More about Lou Merritt later in this video. So let's answer a viewer question because John K asks, why do I sometimes naturally bite my tongue when concentrating on things? The short answer as to why some people bite their tongue while concentrating is that the tongue requires a surprising amount of brain power to manage. Beyond general motor control that's covered in various types of sensors, constantly providing feedback to your brain about what's going on in your mouth and making sure that your teeth aren't mashing the tongue. Even when you're not using it for speaking, it is continually moving slightly as it imperceptibly forms words you are thinking about. All this seemingly involuntary movement provides a steady stream of data for certain parts of your brain to pay attention to, even when those parts of your brain are otherwise trying to concentrate on something else. So the leading hypothesis as to why you stick out your tongue and bite your tongue is that generally immobilizing your tongue by biting it reduces the amount of stimuli that might otherwise interfere with your attention, particularly when you're concentrating on certain types of activities that we're going to get to in a moment. Now let's get into the slightly longer explanation. Until relatively recently, scientists thought that cognition and motor skills activated and were controlled by distinct portions of the brain, with the former occupying the basal ganglia and cerebellum and the latter affecting and coming from the prefrontal cortex. This thinking has since changed. For instance, in 2000, developmental psychologist and neuroanatomist Adele Diamond published Close Interrelation of Motor Development and Cognitive Development of the Cerebellum and Prefrontal Cortex. Relying on neuroimaging and analysis, Diamond revealed how the human brain's motor and cognitive functions were linked, and that they could both be activated, either for certain motor or certain cognitive tasks. Moreover, others have discovered how those portions of the brain that take in language, form new words to speak, and move the hardware to speak it, including the tongue and the face, are related, and in some cases use the same portions of the brain. That is, the part of the brain that takes in spoken words and language inputs, where Nikki's area, is linked together in a neural loop with that portion of the brain that comes up with the words to say and actually says them, the Broca's area. Throwing more evidence on this pile, in August of 2015, researchers noted that concentrating on specific types of nonverbal communication tasks are more likely to induce such tongue biting or protrusions than others. In the paper, Slip of the Tongue Implications for Evolution and Language Development, they studied the tongue protruding tendencies of children via observing a group of four year olds doing various tasks, children being drastically more likely to stick out their tongues when concentrating than adults. As noted in the paper, these tasks, to quote, require varying degrees of manual attention, precision motor action, gross motor action, and no motor actions. While each type of tasks resulted in at least some of the children eliciting the expected behavior of sticking out and biting their tongues when particularly concentrating, the researchers were very surprised to note that it was not tasks with particularly fine motor skills that resulted in the largest likelihood of tongue protrusions, but rather when the children were asked to play a game called knock and tap. In this somewhat fast-paced task, the children knocked the table when the researcher tapped and tapped when the researcher knocked. This is a game that doesn't require particularly precise motor skills, but was the only motor task given that stimulated many of the elements of basic hand gesture communication. The fact that the children were all right-handed and when sticking out their tongues during the specific task tended to stick it out to the right indicated it was controlled by the left hemisphere of the brain, which is typically more dominant for language in right-handed individuals. The researchers concluded from all of this and similar evidence from past studies that there is a strong connection between the tongue and the hands via the language centers of the brain. This is likely a remnant of what is thought to be the earliest form of human language, and that's basic gestures. The bottom line from all of this is that when you're concentrating, and particularly on something that requires taking in language and or producing some of your own, including using communicative motor skills or thinking deeply using your inner voice to drive the thought, your tongue is getting stimulated the whole time, even though you probably aren't consciously registering it. When particularly high levels of concentration are required to keep the tongue from distracting your noggin with additional data or tasks to perform when you're not actually otherwise wanting to use it, the general hypothesis is that sticking out and biting your tongue reduces the need for your brain to manage or pay attention to it, leaving certain parts of your brain free to concentrate more fully on other things. 
As to why, as you age, the tendency to stick out and bite your tongue when concentrating drastically diminishes, this is anybody's guess at this point, with hypotheses ranging from that you simply learn to force yourself not to do this as it's not entirely socially acceptable, or perhaps your brain gets more efficient at many tasks requiring less concentration to do them, thus fewer instances of tongue biting, or maybe your brain simply gets better at tuning out the tongue whenever necessary. So, if you want to start thinking deeply, perhaps sticking out and biting your tongue a little more, very smooth transition to today's sponsor, well, you should go with Lumerate. Career-wise, college is pretty important. I think everybody knows that college does lead to better career outcomes, but it also comes with plenty of baggage. Maybe that's all the wasted time on unnecessary credit, or maybe you're just worried that you're going to end up in so much debt that you never move out of your parents' basement. Look, whatever stage you are at in life, college, especially without all of the crazy debt, can be a great way to take the next step. Look, I went to college, or as we call it, on this side of the pond, university, and while it's not exactly been a straight path to where I am today. The skills and knowledge that I got through that academic stuff is really a part of what led me to here. Or maybe in your position, you took a crack at college and you didn't finish. Whatever your situation, Lumera can be a great step to take right now, or actually after this video. We've got a bonus fact for you coming up. But what you can do now is click the link in the description below, open up a new tab so that you can check them out after this video. Okay, so you might be thinking right now, well, Simon, that all sounds cool, but what do Lumerit actually do? Well, you get a free consult about how long and how much it's going to cost you to get a degree or finish your existing degree. They'll show you how much it will cost, what classes you need to take to graduate as fast as possible, as well as if you can take some of those classes online. And Lumerit, they're not some sort of sketchy online university where you buy a useless piece of paper. These are great degrees from great universities. I actually recognize several of the names that they work with, and I'm not exactly an expert on US colleges. So don't get screwed over by student loans. Go to lumerit.com forward slash brain food. Link in the description below. And let's get into that bonus fact. We don't bite our tongues when we eat most of the time due to complex neural interrelationships where certain premotor neurons simultaneously connect the motor neurons that control jaw opening and those that handle sticking out your tongue and conversely another set of premotor neurons synchronize the motor neurons that manage jaw closing and those that control retracting your tongue. So I really hope you found that video interesting. If you did, please do hit that thumbs up button below and don't forget to subscribe. Also don't forget to check out Lou Merritt. You can find a link to them in the description below. And as always, thank you for watching.